All right, welcome back to another video, guys. It is episode seven of the Shred series, back on track, a little bit less than a week since uh, the shoulder day, which was last episode. Now, it is Tuesday. I talked about my split uh, earlier in the series. It was that ab session I did. I kind of broke down what, the, what each day is right now for my training split while I'm on this cut. Now, I did switch the days around for the start of the week. Typically, Tuesdays I'm training back. Mondays I'm training chest. Trained back yesterday. Today I'm training some chest because by the end of the series, I wanna have shown you guys each workout essentially that's, that's in my split. So we're gonna get after some chest today. Really, for this workout today, there's nothing outside of the, the basic core bodybuilding chest movements, if you wanna call them, uh, that I'm doing. Uh, I'll hit a little bit of triceps at the end. Really the focus is, in, in a lot of these workouts in this split, the focus is just the execution of each exercise, doing my best to maximize the tension on the muscle uh, without having to move a crazy amount of weight around. Now for the compounds, you guys will see, I do like pushing some weight for that eight to 10 reps, but it's very controlled. So even from the start, you'll see an incline press. I'm not gonna rush through moving the weight because the goal isn't to get 10 to eight to 10 reps. The goal is to place as much tension on my chest as I can. And in doing so, I'm hitting eight to 10 reps, but that's the target. The goal is growing the chest. All right, so first compound movement, after I warmed up my rotator cuff, we'll do, uh, let's see, probably two, two warm-up sets, like five to eight reps, just feel the weight. Again, take that, take those warm-up sets as an opportunity to really connect with moving the weight with, in this case, my upper chest. So I'll start at, I don't know, we'll see, 60, 65 or so. And then for that tricep that I like to do for my rotator cuff on my push days. Now, if you're, if you're following the training program on my app, you'll notice that's written in as the, as the Y, I, and W raise. It'll say three rounds, 12 and 12 reps. So 12 is for each, or excuse me, it'll say two rounds, 12 and 12 reps. 12 is for the reps for each component, each round, if that makes sense. So. 12 Y's, 12 I's, 12 W's, then you rest, repeat it for one more round, and then go into the press. So just wanted to clear that one up if you, for those of you who are in the app or thinking about joining it. If you don't want to check it out, the first week is free. Uh, give it a try. If you don't like it, you can cancel. No worries, but uh, some good training in there. All right, so the importance of this is there's absolutely zero significance other than the fact that I don't feel like looking at a red bar. Will it make the set better? Probably not, but you gotta do it anyway, right? All right, with this guy, quick warm up on there. I'm gonna try to stick to 225 for all four sets. This has been one of my favorite chest supersets 
for honestly a few years now. So I've been, I'll throw it in here and there in my training. It's hard to progress much in weight on it, mainly for two reasons. Because as soon as I add a little bit to, well one being, as soon as I add a little bit to the bench, the fly gets a lot more difficult. And then I'm a lot more taxed on the next set since this is, since this is a superset between the, the flat bench and a flat fly. So it's more about getting blood in my chest than building strength. But at the same time, my incline dumbbells have been getting stronger, even maintaining right now, I guess, because I can't really set cutting. Although it's been, uh, it's been a good, what, two days now? Like I said in the last video, I had to start Monday cutting at least the calories. So I, I feel it, I feel a little more flat as I take most of my calories from my carbs when I do that. It was a pleasure. <laughs> So I want to hit one more upper chest movement without putting too much tension on my front delt. A lot of times I'll do like a kneeling landmine chest press, right? So you get the, the barbell position, kind of like you're gonna do a row, but instead of being over the barbell, say that ends there, I'd be off of one knee squeezing like this. So I'm squeezing together while driving up. And that activates my front chest, or excuse me, my, um, my upper chest pretty good, but it also does put some, a decent amount of tension on my front delt. So with the cables, I'm just gonna do a low to high fly, fill out the first set, get in four working sets. And usually because I'm coming up across my body, I'm not putting as much tension on my front delt. And I feel like I can get a pretty damn good squeeze still. We'll see though. Oh yeah. Ooh. All right, so with that one, if you notice, honestly, that's a good working way right there. But I'm gonna do 10 to 12, pretty controlled, where I'm focused on my shoulder position relative my, to my chest. I don't like to fully extend on these. I like to kind of stay more neutral, not collapse my chest in, but when I'm more neutral, I feel like I have a, I can bring a better squeeze at the top to my upper chest. I mean, that's really just a feel thing. Um, of course, controlling the negative, making sure I get a good stretch on it. And then once I hit about 10 to 12 and I'm not able to control it or I'm not able to do each rep effectively that slow, then I kind of speed it up. You'll saw the last like five or six, just a little bit faster pace and just pump a little extra blood in there. Not as clean of reps, but it's helping me extend the set, put a little more time, time under tension on the muscle. Come <laughs> on. 
Uh, really, like I was mentioning, it's only been a day and a half in a caloric deficit, but I'm hoping at least some of that, two, what was it, 202? Five days ago? Yeah, I'm hoping some of that was water. We shall see. Yeah, I'll take that. So probably a little bit of water weight. What is that, 198, we'll call it. So three, four pounds of water. That, that, uh, that sounds about right. I mean, really, I don't stress the scale too much for that reason. Sometimes water will uh, manipulate it. Um, but it's a good marker. I just kind of want to see what I end up getting down to since some of you asked when I do cut, like what my last stage weight was when I competed last. I don't know, you know, I never got on the scale. My coach and I never did check-ins by weight, so I just didn't know, but it's good. It's good information to have. You know, why not take inventory of it? Um, that's all I got today. The next video, We'll go over a little nutrition next week. But man, it just feels good to be back in a good good routine. Everything's familiar here. So it's time to really start dialing things in a little bit more. What else is there? I think that's it. Uh, for Black Friday, Raw Nutrition, a supplement company I've been working with probably for, well, really since the start of this year, they'll be running a sale uh, so I think the code is still just code Merck like it normally is for supplements. So I'll throw that down there in the description along with the pre-workout stack that I like to take from them, post-workout, and then any uh, vitamins, kind of the, the morning essentials I take. So omega-3, multivitamin, probiotic, uh, just everything that kind of keeps me healthy and operating good. I'll link down in the description of this one since there's some pretty good Black Friday deals going on. Other than that, I'll catch you guys next week in episode Eight. That's a chest day. Thanks for tuning in. But what do I know? I'm just Merck.